Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and welcome to The Hive. In this episode, we're going to migrate our production Home Assistant installation from our old Raspberry Pi 3 to this brand new 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. It's complete overkill, I know, for that, but um, the extra few bucks over the 4 gig model, it seems like there was no really good reason not to. So if we pop over to our laptop, this is my production instance of Home Assistant. It's about two and a half years old and I have some suspicions that the SD card is starting to fail. It crashes about every 48 hours or so uh, and it tends to chug a bit because I probably have uh, too much load on it. I will in a future video be exploring booting my Raspberry Pis off the network but uh, for now, I'm going to stick with an SD card. So I showed you in episode one how to image an SD card. I'm going to do that again here because I believe there was an editing mistake that glossed over it a little bit. Okay, so this time I'm going to use Raspberry Pi Imager instead of using the Belena Etcher. And I'm going to click on this Choose OS button, scroll all the way to the bottom, click on Use Custom. And in my shared folder here, I have the HasOS image, which I downloaded from the Home Assistant website. So I'll click open there and choose SD card. I'm going to choose the Apple SD card reader and I'm going to click write. And it's going to erase it, are you sure? We'll click yes. And it's going to ask me for my password. While we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to open the Raspberry Pi box. So this is a brand new eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to attach a heatsink onto the main Broadcom chip on here because the Raspberry Pi 4 does have a tendency to run hot. Okay, great, so the card has finished imaging. Um, now, if you're on a Mac, you'll probably get this error message. We can just hit ignore, and we can click continue on that message as well, and we can now quit the Raspberry Pi imager. I'm gonna pull out the SD card and pull that out of the adapter, and place that inside the Raspberry Pi. If it helps if I put it around the right way. Um, now, the main reason I like to use the Power over Ethernet hat is uh, A, because I can, and I have a Power over Ethernet switch, um, but also it means that I can get everything working off just the one cable into the Ethernet port. So it does make my network rack a little bit tidier. Another thing about Power over Ethernet that I've noticed is, uh, and especially with my Raspberry Pi 3s, um, I've only got one other Raspberry Pi 4, so I have no point of comparison. Uh, but especially with my Raspberry Pi 3s, I noticed that power over Ethernet was far more stable than powering through the micro SD port. Uh, USB Type C is a lot better at um, power delivery, so I will have to do some experiments on that. So before we go and plug the Raspberry Pi in, what I'm going to do is go over to my production server and grab a snapshot. We spoke about snapshots in episode two, so. This is my production server here. I'm just gonna turn that garage light off. I'm going to click on the supervisor down the left-hand side. And when that comes up, I'm going to click on snapshots. And here's the snapshot that I created this morning. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click download snapshot. That's gonna take a little while to download because it's about 350 meg. And then once that's done, we will go and plug in this Raspberry Pi and get that set up. Now that we're on the onboarding page, from around about version 116, you could actually use this alternatively. You can restore from a previous snapshot, but it appears there might be some bugs with that. What I'm going to do is create a new instance here. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about the details. I'm just going next, next, next through this. And then I'm going to go to the supervisor, go to snapshots and click on the three dot stack over here and upload a snapshot and grab this one here, click open. And this is now going to upload the snapshot into this Home Assistant instance. OK, 
okay it seems that there was a problem with that so instead I'm going to go to supervisor I'm going to go to the add-on store and I'm going to install the SMB share to try and solve this problem I'm just going to pop that tar file on the desktop to make it a little easier to find I need to start the SMB share okay we'll connect it to that and I'm going to go to the backup folder and I'm going to drag and drop that tar file into the backup folder. Okay, great. So that's updated. So we can close that and we'll go back to supervisor, snapshots, and ah, it's already showed up. So we've got this full snapshot and we're going to click on that. I'm going to untick this Home Assistant 116.4. I'm going to click restore selected. So now, are you sure you want to partially restore this snapshot will click restore and that should take a take its time and restore the snapshot for us there's a lot of additional work that needs to be done in the background so to make sure that the new raspberry pi takes over for the old raspberry pi i'm going to need to update my router configuration for the static ip and then reboot each device after doing that. I'm not gonna show you how to set up a static IP on your Raspberry Pi using your router and DHCP settings because that varies depending on the vendor. And the same with port forwarding. For the record, I'm using a Ubiquiti Edge Router X instead of the awful thing that came with my MBN plan. Okay, so after modifying my static IP, and restoring the snapshot, I am now at my web interface. So I'm going to sign in with my API password. And it still says it, it says it's still starting up and not everything will be available. We'll just dismiss that because we know about that. And that's looking pretty good. Everything appears to be loading up. My integrations appear to be working. And let's just check the external connectivity. Yeah, so my redirection and dynamic DNS is all working as well. Now it's important to understand that after pushing the restore of Home Assistant, it did take a good 15 to 20 minutes to come back up. It is important while you're waiting for it to come back up that you don't go and disturb the Raspberry Pi because it could corrupt the restore. So that's restoring a backup or migrating to new hardware. I do hope you don't need to use this information, but if you do, I hope it helped you out. As you saw, there were some challenges and it can sometimes be a little bit harder than it's supposed to be. And that's why I've made this video to help you with restoring if you ever need to. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to share with your friends and family and subscribe if you're not already and hit that bell icon as well to get notified when I release new videos. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.